STV, votre télé. The Progressive Movement Party of Jean-Jacques Kindi has decided to throw its weight behind Fine. President Paul Bia on October 7 presidential poll as a result of the non-existence of a vibrant opposition coalition. Plus, they announced amalgamation of police stations in the southwest and northwest regions on October 7 by the electoral body has been rejected by the SDF party, saying it is at the detriment of potential voters longing for the win of change. Those are my list stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and thanks for joining me. I am Henry Wana at the Anchor in Douala. Jean-Jacques Kindi and his Progress Movement Party have decided to throw their weight on President Paul Bia ahead of the October 7 presidential poll. According to him, their decision to support incumbent Paul Bia is as a result of the non-existence of a vibrant opposition coalition in Cameroon. John Paul Sama. Five points presented by Jean-Jacques Ekindi enabled them to unanimously throw the weight and support of the Progressive Movement Party behind Paul Bia for the October 7th presidential elections. After having X-rayed the proposals of the other eight candidates, they saw that the one put forth by the CPDM flag bearer was the way forward in solving the crisis in Cameroon, and he also stands the greatest chance of being re-elected. We have ideas and projects. We want somebody to implement these ideas and these projects. And we feel that Paul Bia is the only one able to do it properly. We, it doesn't mean that Paul Bia is perfect, that his governance is uh, outstanding. It means that we want to contribute to the progress. We have a lot of ideas on so many domains. We cannot keep them just for us. We need somebody to implement them, and we are ready to help him to implement them. This is why we have taken the choice of in coming out with this support, they looked at factors he proposes like in the health domain as well as others not leaving out the structural crisis which the country faces like corruption. I'm not judging too much his manifesto. I know that when he'll receive, and I'll do my best for, for, for us, to have on his table our manifesto and our ideas tomorrow. When he'll see them, he'll see points of contradiction where in his manifesto and in ours, we think it won't be the same. But if he is honest, he must also be uh, uh, obliged to recognize that what he did is not perfect. It's perfectible. Maybe by adding what we are bringing, it will be better. And we are ready to do all that. And we also know that we are not perfect. We are not God. Maybe they'll explain to us that in certain aspects, you have to take the things differently. But on this dialogue, I think that we'll find progress. The unknown alliance with the other opposition political parties was explained by the fact that they are divided amongst themselves and so stand a very little chance of winning the election. Because if the opposition candidates made an effort to come to a one opposition candidate, they would have increased their chances of winning. And they would have been able to take our proposals and to implement them. But by just going alone, each of them, there is no chance. It means that even if we choose one of them, it will be a pure failure. We wouldn't have any progress. It is worth noting that this is not the first time the Progressive Movement Party is forming a coalition as they did so in 2004 with the Social Democratic Front Party. They now join a host of others supporting and pushing forth the flag bearer of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement Party, Paul Bia, to yet another term in office. They announced amalgamation of polling stations in the northwest and southwest regions 
on election day by the electoral body has been condemned and rejected by Joshua Nabangi Osi. He was speaking today in Douala during his last press conference before the start of campaigns on September 22. Darlene Fajer reports. It is in all assurance that Joshua Osi, presidential candidate for the Social Democratic Front Party, guaranteed Cameroonians that polling stations in the Northwest and Southwest regions will not be transformed into polling centers come October 7, 2018. The move by Elections Cameroon due to the security challenges in the two regions has been considered illegal. All the polling stations still exist and there is no provision in the law at this present moment that allows ELECAM or the government of Cameroon to move away polling stations. They're basically putting together all the polling stations into one or two polling centers per council area in the northwest and southwest regions. Making it such that many voters will have to trek for more than 40 kilometers on a day when people are not allowed to move between two areas, notwithstanding the additional curfew imposed by the governor of the Northwest province. We consider what they're trying to put in place as being apartheid. It is apartheid because what they're trying to do is to disenfranchise the registered voters of the Northwest and Southwest to be able to go and vote. Speaking during the last press conference before the start of campaigns, on Saturday, September 22nd, at the party's headquarters in Douala, Osi was clear and firm. The responsibility of the government of Cameroon, up and until I take office, is to secure each and every Cameroonian wherever he finds himself. And the obligation of this government is to make sure that each and every Cameroonian is allowed to go out and vote with full safety. There is no part of the electoral code or the constitution of Cameroon that puts in place second-class citizens, especially when it comes to voting. The preparedness of elections Cameroon ahead of the October 7 polls was also raised. We have further evidence at this time on the simple fact that up to today, the various commissions that are supposed to be put in place by ELECAM haven't been put in place, that ELECAM is having tremendous difficulties to man the polling stations. Despite all security threats in the Northwest and Southwest regions, Joshua Osi gave the assurance that he and the party will effectively campaign in both regions. During today's press conference in Douala, Joshua Nabangi Osi seized the occasion to present his presidential campaign program to the pressmen. Let's have an extract of that. We are launching our campaign on Saturday, the 22nd of September, starting in the Mungo Division of Cameroon and ending up on that day in the Menua Division of Cameroon. The day after, we will be in the Honkam Division, in the Ho Plateau Division, in the Konki Division, in the Nde Division, in the Mifi Division, and in the Nu Division. And the day that follows, we will go from the Nun Division to the Adamawa Division. We can, at this time, unfortunately, not give you our entire schedule for the simple reason that we are accustomed or we have a certain history or we have a certain experience in elections in Cameroon. And if you quite remember, in 2011, we suffered a major setback when Mr. Paul Bia and the entire government of Cameroon using the taxpayers' money, when campaigning in the far north and blocked the airspace of Cameroon, making our candidate of 2000, blocking our candidate of 2011 at the Yaoundé Simalen airport. Members of the Defenders of Human Rights Network, REDAC, are denouncing the illegality of the payment of campaign funds and ill treatment of persons arrested in line with the Anglophone crisis. These 
was at a press briefing in Douala today. Veronica Aji, report. The security context in Cameroon at the moment is one which, according to the Human Rights Defenders Network, REDAC, cannot warmly host presidential elections. The mass rural exodus, illegal arrest and detention, and inhuman living conditions of persons in prison arrested in line with the Anglophone problem. To the Human Rights Network, though the fight against Boko Haram has borne fruits, many are still struggling to pick up broken pieces. At a press briefing, Redak officials termed corruption the mode of payment of campaign funds to presidential aspirants. Aussi, dans une circulaire de, du ministère des Finances, afin de... Stating laws of our country forbids the payment of over 200,000 CFA in cash, but gives out millions in cash to political candidates. 15 million de francs CFA en espèce aux candidats. The Human Rights Defenders Network suggests a Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission in our presidential programs as a means in resolving the crisis. The town of Kumba is still to feel the election fever due to the ongoing social political crisis in the southwest region. Some party officials based in Kumba say for political parties to visit the town to present their manifesto is risky at the moment. Rather, the government should reinforce measures to, end to see that the elections on October 7 runs smoothly. Daniel Aneba, report. Despite the little or no interest shown by the population of Meme Division over the upcoming October 7th election, officials of the Meme Divisional Branch of Elections Cameroon Lekam have expressed great satisfaction with the progress made in getting them ready for the upcoming elections. According to Meme Divisional Elecam communication head, over 50% of the expected number of persons have applied to be chairpersons of polling stations at the level of Kumba Central. Um, we've been receiving applications for chairpersons of polling stations. And um, so far, if you take, for example, the Kumba One um, uh, Council branch, we have close to 50% of, um, of people who have applied to be chairpersons for the 49 um, polling stations in the subdivision. So, so far, things are in motion. Um, we are hoping that before the elections, a week before the elections, everything will be 100% um, on point. He regretted the fact that Bonge and Konya subdivisions are yet to react in this light. The communication head further expressed worries over the refusal by voters to come and collect their cards. The Kumbamba polling station, um, polling center, but to know exactly whether it is polling station A, B or C, you need your card. With members of the Divisional Electoral Commission made up of the representatives of political parties running for the elections and the updated provincial electoral rule of voters already in their keeping, they are almost ready for the elections at the level of Mehmet Division, he said. A two-day seminar on co-ownership of building is underway in Bamenda. This new innovation by the government shall enable citizens to purchase houses at affordable prices, jointly share the building with a co-owner, given that land has become scarce and expensive nowadays. Love and Bear reports from Bamenda. Given that land has become a very scarce and expensive commodity, especially in urban areas, the Cameron government has come up with a new innovation known as joint ownership, where two individuals can jointly own and share the same building. It's coming in place because towns have been expanding horizontally. And with the influx of the population from the rural area to the urban area, land has been so expensive and since land is not elastic the state deem it necessary to bring in this concept before a building is even put into joint ownership the promoter must get the services of a surveyor to prepare what we call division description to divide the building into lots 
before you buy an apartment, you must know that this is the way we want people to live in this structure. You must not do this, you must not do that. That is the first stage. To ensure that this new concept goes on smoothly, the Ministry of State Property, Surveys and Land Tenure has organized a two-day seminar in the Northwest region to enable local actors acquaint themselves with these new concepts of co-ownership, whose major challenge is that of ownership. The concept uh, by government to ease the access to private property by all citizens and also uh, make available uh, low-cost houses to the general public. I would like to thank the ministry that I decided to organize this uh, training session to allow the stakeholders to acquaint themselves with that new concept and uh, make it available for all the Northwesterners. The law relating to co-ownership of buildings was adopted on December 21, 2010, and Section 9 favors co-owners as it gives them the right to know all the information relating to his rights, the obligations and the conditions for living in co-ownership. This new concept equally has advantages. Not only it benefits the user, but it benefits the partners too, because they do the, they do the investment and it saves them the headache of coming every day to ask for rent. And it permits them to make maximum use of the space they have to. This innovation shall enable Cameroonians purchase houses at affordable prices, promotes living together and tolerance, provided none of the co-owners does not infringe on the rights of the other or the purpose of the property as stipulated by Section 10 Sub 2 of the December 2010 law relating to co-ownership of buildings. Professor Justin Tifo, specialist in business law, has published a book titled Doing Business in Africa to evaluate the business climate within the African sub-region. Veronica Aji read through that book and now presents it to us. What can we do together to improve the business climate in Cameroon is the question Professor Justine Tifo examines in her book titled Doing Business in Africa analysis of Cameroon's performance over the last 10 years. Doing business in Africa, the analysis of the Cameroon performances over the last 10 years. Uh, in, in that book, uh, we involve all the private sector on, uh, in, in the data collect, and we also meet, met with a startup. The Amazon of Cameroon at the African Union is in essence trying to make a way out for Cameroon's economy, which is still growing, but not at the expected rate. Doing business in Africa is led in by Tuna Mama, member of the Cameroon Scientific Academy and coordinator of the Cameroon Business Forum. The book has been published in French with 166 pages against 158 in English, all with 12 chapters. Let's now talk health in this newscast. The Cameroon Cardiologist Society in Cameroon today uh, presented a series of activities to the press in the commemoration of the sixth edition of World Heart Day under the theme, My Heart, Your Heart. Details in this report. Recent findings have revealed that the yearly number of deaths recorded in the world are caused by cardiovascular diseases stem from this fact World Heart Day was introduced to raise awareness about the dangers of the disease, especially hypertension. We have 30% of people in Cameroon who suffer from hypertension. When the study was carried out in 2017, 52% were from Douala. But it doesn't mean that the, uh, just people from Douala have hypertension. It is for the whole of Cameroon. Medics insist cardiovascular diseases could be prevented if people are disciplined, no matter their family history, since the treatment of the disease requires plenty of finance. To be on the safer side is to do everything possible to reduce the risk factors. That is to avoid getting hypertensive and if you are, take your medications correctly. Avoid getting diabetic. If you are, you take your medications correctly. Do regular aerobic physical activities to stop smoking, to eat more vegetables and fruits and reduce high uh, food with high content of fats. And studies have shown that if you stop smoking one year after, your risk is reduced by 50%. So we have to stop smoking. And in Cameroon, we have a, low, a high consumption of alcohol that also should be targeted. It is for this reason, the Cameroon Cardiology Society, during a press conference in Douala, Thursday, September 20, unveiled her week-long activities to mark the sixth edition of, of World Heart Day under the theme, My Heart, Your Heart. 
the commemorative activities to end on September 30. The cardiologist family in Cameroon seeks to touch the lives of over 3,000 Cameroonians if they must attain their objective this year. Quality care in internal medicine is a theme under which medical and paramedical staff of the Lacantini Hospital have gathered in Douala this Thursday. The staff of this health institution have been drilled on how to provide quality care to patients in this health institution. Let's have an extract of one of the participants. Those who are taking part in this seminar are medical doctors, are nurses, all level of nurses, and even all those who are concerned that you've seen a, a paramedical profession like uh, um, delegate medical, I recall in, in French, all these people, all those who can help a patient in the hospital, no matter the specialty, uh, those who can help uh, to take care of the patient, that is doctors and nurses, that's those who are taking care. And secondary, we have a researcher researcher because we are taking this occasion to to present the research medical research that are done at Lakenti hospital because sometimes people thought that we don't do research here but we've shown many uh, results of the research that have been done here at Lakenti hospital at international medicine uh, department yes the, you, you've seen that the main theme of this seminar is quality of care so we, have, we expect from medical doctors and nurses to, 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 to increase the quality of care at Lachikanyi Hospital. So we are showing on different specialty in neurology, in cardiology, dermatology, uh, pulmonary diseases. We are uh, training them in, in such a way to increase their way of taking care of people. And then, as you saw in one of the presentation, to, 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 to increase and to, to, to ameliorate the relationship between the patients and the caretakers. Let's now make some money in this newscast. TV at your convenience, anytime, any place. That is what MTN Cameroon has made possible for all its customers. This is thanks to a new revolutionary mobile application, Yabadu. The app allows users to watch more than 40 local and international TV channels live, as well as over 700 on-demand movies and series. It's an entertainment service. It should be entertaining. It should be fun. It should be non-formal, and hence Yabadu. It's something that is truly entertaining for the end user and very catchy that sticks in your mind. So this is what we do. TV is Yabadu. Yabadu is TV. Enjoy the service as well as we do. Yabadu is easy to access and navigate. The best part, after downloading on Google Play Store or Apple Play Store, the service is absolutely data free. Basically what you need to do is to download the application from the Play Store uh, or from the, uh, free, from the Google Play Store or the App Store for, for iOS. It's completely free once you download it. You don't have to pay anything. It will ask you, kind of like the other OTT services, it will ask you for your uh, phone mobile number, for your MTN mobile number. Once you place it, you receive a verification code via SMS to ensure that you are the sole owner of this number. Once it's activated, it's a one-time procedure, that's it. You are redirected to the, to the home page, whereby you can browse all the content that's available, and anything you buy is directly deducted from your phone bill, from your phone credit that is basically uh, easily available to top up and the user is already accustomed to using. MT in Cameroon is using the application to put the spotlight on local content, making it available to a wider audience, very much to the satisfaction of local content providers. To them, it is an unprecedented opportunity. Because to me, it's a wonderful opportunity that has come that will enable us to market our movies, show the world what the Cameroonian public is able to do. Because for a long time now, we've having, we, have, we have been having production, especially in the Cameroon film industry, but not having the means to make or to showcase our talents, our work to the world. And I think Yabadu has come to fill that gap. For TV channels like Spectrum Television, Yabadu provides an opening for viewers to watch all their favorite programs wherever they may be, conveniently making them available on their smartphones. The advantage for STV for this application is that it gives STV more visibility. But also, do not forget, it allows STV to make some additional revenue. And that's a major advantage for us to be on this platform. 
Because the key is that you want to be on as many platforms as possible. Look at it this way. It's like a product that's on many, in many supermarkets. So the more supermarkets you're in, the more visibility you have for your product. So from the perspective of SDV, this adds a lot of value in terms of more eyeballs on the channel and hopefully uh, more revenue back to the channel. Modern times, modern methods. TV viewing has never been made easier. Yabadu is only available to MTN subscribers. Enjoy. And that does it for today's English Primetime Newscast, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you all for being there for us this evening. See you tomorrow. Good night. STV, votre télé.